villagers of our shire have put together quite an opening ceremony for thee. And without further ado, I present to you the Panscandia Extravaganza! shall be gods and heroes. Yeah. Yeah. Now I, Prince Eric of Sweden, will not only adjudicate this competition, but shall also serve as an expert commentator. And to assist me with this, I'm going to request the assistance of the lovely and supremely knowledgeable monarch, her most glorious majesty, she who lives in the hearts of the people, she who makes the sunny sun shine and the little birdies go sing. Thank you, Prince Eric. She who makes the honeybees buzz and the little bunnies go hum, hum, hum. Thank you, Prince Eric. <laughs> she who... Tires of overlong introductions, Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> God save the Queen. God save the Queen. Many thanks, Prince Eric, for that most intriguing salutation. Good people of Stirling and visitors to this shire, it is our privilege to introduce unto ye the captains for our glorious game. Captaining the black side, Sir Philip de Mark, the Sheriff of Nottingham. <laughs> and co-captains for the white side, the Lady Marion Fitzwalter and Robin Hood. <laughs> These players shall represent figures both mortal and immortal from Greek and Norse mythology engaged in legendary clashes of epic proportions. 
Be it known, however, that the traditional outcome of these battles is in no way guaranteed. Prince Eric. That we are going to continue a game that is left unfinished by the Norse gods Thor and Loki. Interrupted when Thor's hammer Mjolnir have been stolen by the giant Thrym. Uh, in the ransom for the hammer, Thrym had insisted upon the hand of the most beautiful goddess Freya. However, Freya had refused. So a crafty Thor had disguised himself in the, the guise of the reluctant bride. And while we do not exactly know what transpired between the god and the giant, we do know that Thor, in fact, did get his hammer back. Gods do not kiss and tell. Neither do mana. Players oh. to my position! Let the game continue! Huzzah! Black has the next move. As it should be, let me see here. Ah, yes. Captain O'Malley, to the square opposite my sister Priscilla, please. Lead to Bishop Ford. Ooh, excellent move, my dear. Beaver, up two squares. Come on, Sheriff. <laughs> Robert Cecil, to the right of Lady Mary, please. Aye. Robert Cecil. Mm, ah, yes. Beaver, wipe him off the board. Pawn takes pawn. Clear the board. <laughs> From Norse mythology, Fenrir, the son of Loki, the great wolf, versus Vidar, the son of Odin. You have this one. Is not Fenrir, a son of Loki, prophesied to kill Odin at the time of Ragnarok? Oh, this is absolutely true, Your Majesty. You may call me Prince. You may call me Prince. <laughs> Just kidding. Of course, Bess, you may call me Eric, but do not call me late to this very exciting chess match. It is exciting. I cannot think that we are too happy about that dead serious prediction of Fenrir killing his father. No, no, not happy at all. Yes, Bess, we are going to see some fantastic chess matches here in the field of battle today. Then we are quite furious with all of his attacks, and he does. He acted so much as ever, just like a dog. The twins, Castor and Pollux, sons of the great god Zeus and the mortal woman Leda, versus their own twin sisters, Helen of Troy and Clytemnestra. I have no doubt that the family gathering is going to be quite interesting indeed. As a matter of fact, I'd love to be a fly on that wall. Or a swan on the lake. I have been safe today for many years now. <laughs> oh, uh, Pollock is carrying a spear. He must be hunting a Caledonian bull. Ah, well, we do know that what he is bearing a long tusk here. We have to see what is exactly going to happen here. Stand down. I think I'll give this one to my lovely sister, Priscilla. What's up? The honors. Will Charlie, stand in for Janet. Aye, Robert. 
from Greek mythology, one of the great Gorgons, Medusa, daughter of Poseidon, versus the heroic Mycenaean warrior Perseus, son of Zeus. One look from the Gorgon's eyes would turn any living creature into stone. Avoiding her gaze. Eric, should we even be watching this fight? I do not worry so much, Bess. I do, in fact, have the antidote. Which is? Gorgonzola, of course. You know, Medusa is quite the sight. I understand she was once quite beautiful. This is, in fact, true, Bess. Oh! oh. Yeah, she had once vied in the beauty department with the goddess Athena, and this is what you get, a great big case of the Aussies. Yeah, Perseus did not catch her Medusa napping this time around. No, he could definitely use honey and winged sandals to make him escape. Or that the, the, the flying horse Pegasus. Which can only spring from the blood of the defeated Medusa, not likely with the performance that Perseus is giving here today. Oh no, you can say that again, Bess. Oh! That takes the square! Yes! This important result for the hero, Perseus! Alan and Taylor, Captain O'Malley, you can have this one. Ah, uh, from Norse mythology, Baldur, the son of Odin, versus Hel, daughter of Loki and goddess of the underworld. Now, Congress, is not the death of Baldur the event predicted to lead to the twilight of the gods? Well, I believe it is best, however, we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. Oh, oh. <laughs> Baldur certainly seems eager to go to hell in this case. <laughs> well, fortunately for Baldur, mistletoe is the only substance that can prove fatal to him. Hey, something tells me that these two will not be the ones kissing under the mistletoe. Hmm? And Baldur returns again, exactly according to this. Wait, 
in the room. How many heads would you have? Well, apparently at least seven, Eddie. Then it's such a Hercules long oh. helicopter. Oh, Hercules going down. <laughs>